Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast, where we interview remarkable people and share strategies for mastering money and living a meaningful life. With your host, Grant Sabatier, creator of Millennial Money and author of Financial Freedom, a proven path to all the money you will ever need. This episode is sponsored by BlockFi. BlockFi is an all-in-one digital wealth management solution for cryptocurrency investors. At BlockFi, you can invest in cryptocurrency as a way to diversify your investments and earn up to 8.6% APY on your crypto. Learn more and get a $25 crypto bonus for signing up at BlockFi.com grant. Again, that's B-L-O-C-K-F-I dot com slash grant to get a $25 crypto bonus. This episode is also sponsored by Our Crowd. Wish you were in early on some of the best performing IPOs of 2019 and 2020? With Our Crowd, accredited investors have access to invest directly, easily, and most importantly, early. Our Crowd investors have benefited from Our Crowd companies IPOing like Beyond Meat or being bought by companies like Intel, Nike, Microsoft, and Oracle. Today, you can join Our Crowd's investment in Mimic. Mimic explains that their tiny robotics allow surgeons to be less invasive and safely perform gynecological surgeries so women heal faster and have less scarring. Mimix is a much needed innovation in the rapidly growing multi billion dollar robotic surgery market. You can get in early on Mimic and other unique opportunities at ourcrowd.com slash grant. If you're interested in investing, you need to join our crowd. The Our Crowd account is free. Just go to O U R C R O W D dot com slash grant. All of the proceeds from this episode will be donated to the Food Bank of the Hudson Valley, foodbankofhudsonvalley.org. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast. I have a very special announcement that I'm not going to get to quite yet, but it's coming up very shortly in the episode, and I'll spend the rest of the episode then talking about that announcement. But first, I wanted to reflect a little bit since Millennial Money is now a little over five years old, and I started the blog in 2015, and since starting the blog, I've been really in a reflective mode just the past week, thinking about all the many millions of visitors, and I've received over 32,000 reader emails from all over the world and increasingly in Japanese and Turkish and Chinese. And while I haven't had the opportunity to read all of them in great detail, I appreciate everyone that gets sent and I try to write back to as many as possible. So keep sending those emails. I love them and I'm so appreciative. It's really been quite the journey. There's now over 2 million words on Millennial Money and over 1 million of them I've written personally, and obviously we cover a wide variety of topics. But when I started back in the middle of 2015, it was one of the most exciting moments and fearful moments of my life. So I'd spent some time before with my own digital agency and working for a digital agency, building websites for brands and universities and doing SEO for brands and universities, and had all these different clients throughout the years, but I'd never built a website for myself. And Millennial Money is the first website that I built for myself. And really from the beginning, I was nervous about being so open with my story and sharing my journey to financial independence. And most importantly, all the mistakes that I had made so that you podcast listeners and readers wouldn't make the same ones that I made. And you know, some of the big ones I've talked about in the past couple of episodes making so many sacrifices for money and getting addicted to making money and sacrificing my health and all those things I've I've touched on in the previous episodes. But being vulnerable and being open was something that was very difficult for me to do from the beginning. And it's certainly gotten easier over time. But I really started with a simple mission on the blog, and that was to share my own story and to take what really was a pretty hardcore strategy you know, my pursuit of financial independence, as I wrote about very thoroughly in my book, Financial Freedom. And if you haven't read that, pick it up and check it out. 
Uh, I assume most of you have, but if you haven't, check it out and you can get that end-to-end strategy that I use to reach financial independence and all the ups and downs. But it's a, it's a pretty hardcore strategy if you follow every single step and make all of those choices. So one of my goals from the beginning with Millennial Money was really to make financial independence and all the individual steps as accessible as possible and meet readers where they are whether they are deep in debt or were close to financial independence and everywhere in between. I wanted to take those bite-sized ideas and teach them as well as show how I did them and then also illustrate that the sum is so much greater than the parts. And so if you make a few good decisions with money, it has a compounding factor that helps accelerate your journey to financial independence. And so Starting the blog right out the gate, I didn't know anything about blogging, but I did know about building websites. And so I built it very purposefully and very intentionally. And what I wanted to do was share my personal story in a very open and vulnerable way. But I wanted to have a brand that seemed a lot bigger than one person. And so the reason I chose Millennial Money, which was a domain that I had bought in a domain auction, and you know I like buying and selling and flipping domains, and it's just one that I had and thought would be a great brand... I wanted the media and I wanted visitors to think that millennial money was much larger than just me, than just one guy on his laptop writing posts while flying between client meetings and airports and in Marriott hotels and sitting in airport lounges. I I wanted it to, to, to become a bigger brand and to have bigger resonance beyond just me and my personal story. But I knew that if I didn't bring my personal story openly and honestly, it would never catch on. And so that was my goal right out the gate. And it was simply to share what I knew and to build a reach and a platform and hopefully have the opportunity to write a book and to change as many lives as possible. Because while there were a few financial independence blogs at the time, uh, Mad Scientist, Mr. Money Mustache, uh, a couple of others that I found you know, in 2011, 2012, what, I, what wasn't around uh, in 2015 was taking these ideas and making them uh, accessible in bite-sized chunks for a broader audience. So that was my goal, and that's what I set out to do. I really had no intention of making money off the website at all. Uh, the goal was to share what I knew, to flex my writing chops, to become a better writer, to hopefully have the opportunity to build a platform and write a book. But I didn't have any intention of monetizing the blog. I had no idea how much blogs could make. I had no idea how much online platforms could make. I really knew nothing, ironically, about turning a blog uh, you know, in, into money and, and building it into a business or becoming, say, a full-time blogger. So I was very naive at the beginning. And what I really did for the first year was just sit down and try to write as many posts as I could. I didn't keep a regular schedule. I just simply wrote what I was feeling and what I'd learned and what I was seeing in the world. And I did that very consistently. And it took a little over a year to start getting consistent readers. And after a year or so, a little over a year or so in October, November 2016, it was when I first started getting those reader emails that highlighted that I was having an impact in readers' lives. So things like you helped me save $13,000, you helped me get out of student loan debt, you helped me, um, you saved my marriage uh, was an email that I got in early 2017. But I started hearing from readers that what I was doing and creating and what I'd been working on very hard for a little over a year was starting to resonate. And so that just gave me further motivation. And then there's another thing that happened in October, November 2016. It was the first time that someone reached out and offered to buy my blog. And so they offered me a little over $100,000 at that time to buy the blog, which was, of course, an insane amount of money, something that I had no idea that blogs were bought and sold like that. And I was having so much fun and enjoying it, and I was already financially independent, that I didn't take the offer, obviously, but it intrigued me that blogs could be valuable and perhaps could be sold one day for 
uh, at least $100,000 and maybe even more. And so that gave me further motivation to double down and to also at this time start researching how to make money blogging, which is something that I was picking up here and there over time. I went to FinCon in 2015 and then again in 2016. And so I was seeing that people were making money blogging, but I was still making very little just on Google AdSense ads from display ads on my website. So fast forward to the spring of 2017. In February, I got my first email from CNBC asking to interview me and share my story about how I'd reach financial independence and become the millennial millionaire. And that article was written by Kathleen Elkins, and the article completely blew up. It was one of the top articles on CNBC that month. I remember seeing my face right under an article about Mark Cuban and above an article about Warren Buffett. And between those two, and then there was an article uh, later on, I was right next to, to Bill Gates. And that was one of those ridiculous moments that I'll always remember. And my friends started sharing the article. And one of the interesting things is that now CNBC writes a lot about millennials making money, but I was really one of the first that they'd written about, and I believe that's one of the reasons why the article took off in addition to my story. But that then led to other media interviews from the Washington Post and NPR, and it really created a blitzstorm uh, in terms of all the media that I did. And since that time, I've done over 500 media interviews, but that was really kind of the beginning, and I really thought it was just my 15 minutes of you know, kind of fame and that this was my one moment to share my message, but it really created a snowball effect where the bigger the platform that I got on, it would just lead to more and more interviews. And then book agents started reaching out and I got a book deal with Penguin Random House. And so I had used the blog and sharing my story to accomplish one of my dreams, which was getting a book deal and being, you know, able to have the opportunity to write financial freedom and share my story uh, in great detail. And then, you know, the blog from that started getting bigger and bigger and I started writing. And one of the things, starting a blog, starting an online platform, you know, those, that first year, those first couple of years are just a real slog. And so, as I've always talked about, it's so much easier to create something or whether it's a side hustle or, uh, just a passion project to do something that you actually enjoy and you actually are passionate about. And, you know, I'm such a money nerd and I have no idea, honestly, why I like personal finance so much. It's just something that really I fell in love with and it stuck with me. And, um, of course, I obviously care a lot and think a lot about money or I wouldn't have written so much about it. And ironically, the topic that I happen to be interested in, I would later learn in early 2018 was a particular online niche that could be very profitable. And so it was in early 2018, mid 2018, when I started connecting with other bloggers who I learned, you know, were making $20,000 a month or $50,000 a month, or I met one blogger who was making over $500,000 a month on their blog, sharing content that was very similar to my content. And honestly, I thought that mine was better. And so just seeing these models of how other people had grown their websites and monetized their websites, I it, it inspired me to take the website more seriously and take my own advice that I should be trying to increase and or maximize the amount of money that I'm making for uh, my time. And so I was very reluctant to turn millennial money into a business. From the beginning, I had no intention of it. And I was very reluctant even after I'd learned that some bloggers were making a fair amount of money blogging and that blogging could actually be a viable income opportunity. And even though I was financially independent, money being a byproduct of something that I was passionate about not only would help me increase my savings and give me more money to invest, but it would also increase the impact that I can have in the world. And so something that I've done pretty steadily since 2017 is increase the amount of money that my wife and I give to a number of charities uh, really across the world. And so that's one of those things I don't talk a whole lot about, but of course, having more resources, having more money gives you more opportunity to have an impact on the world beyond just sharing what you know or loaning your time. And so 2018, I started seeing this and realizing how much money you could potentially make blogging. And it completely shifted my mindset where I'd written a lot 
uh, in Financial Freedom and on the blog about building a lifestyle business, but I really hadn't built one myself. I'd actually failed at building a lifestyle business twice in my life. The first time uh, I launched a company that literally took all of my time and energy, uh, my own digital agency, and that was something that I was very poor at off, you know, outsourcing the work to other people. But then I started a second company and had two business partners and was a little bit better at building a lifestyle business, but woke up, you know, and had a number of employees and a bunch of clients and a business that was still dependent upon me in some ways. And so even with the two companies that I had launched that were successful, they required too much of my time. And honestly, even though I was making good money, they really stressed me out. And so I was actually very bad at building a lifestyle business. So the third time really being the opportunity to turn millennial money into a legitimate business really started in the middle of 2018 when I started adding more affiliates, which are simply I started recommending companies that I used and um, recommending them and writing reviews from them. And one of the things I wanted to do early on was focus on monetizing the website, not by having readers pay for any content, but by having affiliate partners that when value was created, when I could connect a reader to a really good product that I liked or that I used, if I could create that value exchange between those two, then having that company pay me instead of the reader pay me. So I always wanted my content to be free in that sense and was very unsuccessful with this at first because how you monetize your blog from an affiliate perspective and to increase revenue uh, is very different than how my mindset was going into it. So I had to completely kind of rewire my mindset around that and start building the blog uh, to, to make money or to try to make money and to try to increase my Google rankings. And so by early 2019, when Financial Freedom came out, and stick with me here, I have a whole point behind why I'm sharing the history of millennial money and my mindset around it. I'm going to get to that in a second. But back in 2019, in February, my book, Financial Freedom, came out and got me so many media mentions and so many interviews and so many links. It increased my authority around the topic in Google's eyes. It's in SEO, it's called EAT, Expertise, Authority, and Trust. And so Google, from that book and from people linking from me or to me, it increased the potential of millennial money to rank for things on Google, to get more traffic, not only from Google, but from other media websites, to build my email list, to get more podcast subscribers. And so it really created that snowball acceleration in the beginning of 2019, where the website traffic started growing really substantially from the release of the book. And, you know, I was very excited to re release the book and uh, get it out to the world and share everything that I knew, but I completely underestimated the impact that the book would have not only on my life to the extent that it gave me the opportunity to travel across the country and have over 80 events and meet thousands and thousands of readers and also be translated into many languages and uh, get help me get emails from you know all these different countries and Instagram messages and really it enriched my life in so many ways. Um, that I couldn't even have imagined, but it also helped my website immensely. And that's something that I naively wasn't really thinking about, but the website started to rank for things on Google that it hadn't ranked for before. New visitors started showing up. They started spending more time on the website, learning about how to make, save, and invest more money. And here I had an opportunity to connect these readers to valuable products, to valuable services. And I have a very, very high bar for the partners that I will work with on millennial money, I'd say 85%, maybe 90% of the companies that reach out wanting to work with millennial money, I say no uh, immediately, just because uh, I don't believe in their service, I don't believe in their product, I don't know their service, I don't know their product, I hadn't worked with them before, and so the barrier to entry is extremely high for all the partners that we worked with. Well, I started adding more partners, and then I realized in May of 2019 that this website was 
requiring a lot more work than I had anticipated. And so millennial money was always something. It's my mission. It's my passion. It's my, was my lifestyle business, meaning I could spend, you know, five hours working on it one week and the next week working on it 60 hours. And as I felt inspired to go deep into the code or building a calculator or a tool or, you know, nerding out on my Google rankings, I could do that when I wanted to. I could dive into the business. I could dive out of the business. And I could also use the platform to do a ton of different cool stuff and meet cool people. But what started happening is I added more partners and the traffic started growing with more moving pieces, it was just taking more and more of my time. And I had to spend more and more of my time doing things that I didn't enjoy, chasing after partners who wouldn't pay, chasing after writers who wouldn't deliver assignments, chasing after uh, a lot of people. And so I started to have to do those things that I never really enjoyed being an entrepreneur. And I realized that I needed to hire some people. And so I hired one person to help me out. I hired two people. I hired three people. I hired some additional writers to expand content. And then I'd hired over seven people, actually eight people at one point. And then I was spending my time not only writing content and managing the website and the partners, but I was also spending my time managing these seven people. And once again, I was managing a business. And while it was more of a lifestyle business, I could certainly stop and not you know, do less one week and do more the next. When something is growing and you see it growing and you've put in all of this effort, in a lot of cases, it's dumb to not keep building the thing, especially if it's mission driven like millennial money is. And so I'd feel guilty those days that I didn't put in, you know, eight or 10 hours. And here I was financially independent. And all of a sudden, the blog was starting to stress me out a little bit. And I built this thing that I could see to get it to the next level, or even just to manage it as it was growing was not only taking more of my time, but it was creating more stress in my life. And I'm really good at building things. Actually, I wouldn't even say I'm good at building things. I'm, I'd am say I enjoy building things in my life. But once I build them up, managing them and all the moving pieces, I'm not as great at. And so, you know, we all have different strengths. And I've talked a lot on the podcast recently about it's important to find your own limits in your life. And managing people is one of those limits in my life that I recognized a number of years ago. I'm just not that great at. I am not a great manager. I don't enjoy it very much. And here I woke up now last year in June with a team of seven people and a growing business and one that required more and more of my time. And it wasn't making correspondingly more money. And so it was, I was actually having to pay money out of my pocket and it wasn't sustaining itself. So in July of last year, I had the hard decision of, do I scale this back? Do I take my foot off the accelerator? Do I downshift at the risk of the site declining in visitors and fewer people learning about financial independence and financial freedom and how to save money and how to invest. And of course, there are so many personal finance websites out there, and there are a lot of great personal finance websites out there. But one of the things I think a lot of them miss is how all the pieces fit together. And that's why I've viewed millennial money being so important, because I want people to understand that money come second in this equation. It's always about what kind of life do you want to live and how do you use money to live that life, not how do I just make a ton of money and acquire a bunch of resources and build a ton of wealth. None of that matters if you don't enjoy your life. And so that that key piece, and then the second piece, that time is so much more valuable than money. Of course, I've talked about this so many times on the podcast and in the book and on the blog. And a lot of personal finance websites, they're focused on just the money, the money, the money. What trade-offs are you willing to make for the money? But as you know, money is infinite. You can always go out and make it, but you're not going to get back this moment. This moment is really all we have and time is so precious and so valuable. So deciding when it's worth it to make the trade-off for money is even more important. So those two ideas are central to millennial money and really make it stand out and differentiate it from a lot of the personal finance websites out there. So that was really important to me, but I had to make a hard decision last July. Do I grow the website? Do I bring on more team members or do I scale it back and risk having the mission reach fewer people? And as you know, this work is 
mission driven for me. And the blog has continued to make more money. I've continued to get more opportunities, but I was financially independent going into this. And so a vast majority of the money that I've made and that my investments have made since 2015, I plan to give away in some fashion or form and have given away a fair amount and I'm increasingly giving away more. And there's nothing wrong to have money be the byproduct of something that you're passionate about as long as you're enjoying it. And that's one of the things I was really enjoying building the blog and building the brand and reaching, you know, this platform has made my life so incredibly rich and I'm so grateful for everyone listening. I mean that from the bottom of my heart and I know that you know that I do. And so I decided to make the tough choice that uh, I'd moved to New York. I had some time and I was going to commit the next two years to continuing to grow millennial money, no matter what it took to get the message out to as many people as possible. And, you know, I was 34 at the time and just made the commitment to to keep growing it. And so worked very hard with my team to continue to grow the site. And it's continued to grow month over month uh, since, since last July to now where it's one of the largest personal finance websites, not only in the U.S., but in the world. And... A couple of months ago, in the middle of the pandemic, around March and April, the traffic just exploded. And I started getting more emails than ever and more opportunities than ever to the point where I was getting over 400 emails a day from potential partners, which, you know, if you want to build a successful business is a great opportunity. But for me, I realized that I was going to have to make a big change if millennial money was going to continue growing and that I was no longer, after a lot of reflection, I realized that I was no longer going to be able to grow millennial money just by myself and with my team of seven. So there are a number of companies over the past year that have reached out to me interested in partnering up to scale the website and take over operations or take over you know, partner management or Uh, some area of the business. And I had to make the decision, you know, do I hire 10 to 15 more people and all that that entails and managers and set up a larger infrastructure with more overhead and more moving pieces and probably more stress for me because whenever you own a business and you have more than, you know, five employees, what happens is, and you have managers and you have multiple levels of management, what happens is the fires, you know, they go up the food, the, the totem pole, they go up the pole, they go up the ladder. And so you spend most of your time putting out fires and dealing with employee issues or partner issues and less time doing those things that you love, which in my case are writing and recording podcasts and I'm working on another book and doing some other cool things and and really enjoying my life. And so I made the decision that I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to hire 10 or 15 more people to keep growing the website. And so I needed a partner who could help me take it to the next level. And I ended up having over 30 conversations with potential partners in many different forms, from completely outsourcing to selling the website, to selling part of the website, to bringing on silent partner, to bringing on an active partner, to expanding and selling uh, shares in the company. And after many conversations and many phone calls and a lot of soul searching and a lot of reflection, I had to make a decision. What is the best path forward for millennial money, which I started five years ago, which is my baby, which is the thing in my life that I've created that I'm more proud of than anything else. The website that I've put in over 7,000 hours working on, I estimate, over the past five years from writing posts to optimizing the design. There's been four different versions. There's been so many pieces to this website. I've written over a million words on the platform. I've had the opportunity to engage with tens of thousands of people and many, many millions of visitors across the world. And I've accomplished my goals with it. I've accomplished my dream of building a platform and building an online business and writing a book and creating content and connecting with readers all over the world. And so while my mission 
is stronger than ever. And in fact, I'm doubling down on my mission, the day-to-day management of the website and the platform and the business simply became too much for me to manage on my own. And so it's with great excitement as well as a little bit of fear to announce that Millennial Money has been acquired by The Motley Fool, the investment website based out of Alexandria, Virginia, one of the biggest personal finance websites in the United States and the world. It was acquired last week, and so now they have full ownership of the website. And I've signed on to stay on and keep writing and keep managing the strategy and keep writing the newsletters and This podcast is still mine. It wasn't included in the sale. I'm going to keep doing the podcast. I'm going to keep doing everything that I enjoy doing. And now they can take over all those things that I don't. And so one of the keys of me selling the website, one of the things that it was very important was for me to find a partner that I believed could take millennial money to the next level and not run the website into the ground or not make sacrifices for the website and for the community, someone that could truly steward the website into the next level. And after all the conversations, I felt like The Motley Fool was the perfect fit and the perfect partner. And you know that I don't say that lightly. We had many, many conversations. And not only that, I was very familiar with the brand. I actually grew up about seven miles My childhood home, the one I had to move back into when I was 24 and move back in with my parents, my childhood home is seven miles from their headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. So I grew up knowing about The Motley Fool. It was something that was talked about in Northern Virginia where I grew up. It was started in 1993 and has been around a long time. And interestingly enough, the acronym FIRE, Financial Independence Retire Early, was actually coined in a Motley Fool AOL forum in the 90s. And so that idea that fire, financial independence, retire early, actually came out of a Motley Fool forum, which I think is super cool and super fun. And as I evaluated these partners, I wanted to find someone who shared a similar mission to mine with Millennial Money, which on Millennial Money, it's to make financial freedom accessible and available to all, no matter how much money you have or what you look like or where you came from or how you grew up. I wanted to make that information and the opportunity is accessible to everyone. And Motley Fool shares this mission and that they want to help everyone live happier and richer lives. And the way that they've done that through their content very successfully is through investing. And so most of their content focuses on how to grow your money through investing and buying stocks, buying index funds, buying individual stocks, but with a long-term strategy. So holding those investments for a long period of time. They've been very successful in teaching this, as well as their recommendations have been very successful over time. And they've got some huge fans uh, all around the world who I've had the opportunity to encounter over several years. And so they've got a great brand, a great platform, a great team, and they're really great people. And that was one of the things that won me over as well. Just in the conversations I had with their team, they're very human. They're very focused on living lives that they love. They you know, practice what they preach. They believe in helping everyone live richer lives and making a little bit of money in the process. And so they have been a very successful company and successful business. And they have a lot of skill sets that I don't have, not only because they've been doing this for over 27 years, but they're a much larger company than my seven team. So I believe they have over 400, 450 people that work for Motley Fool around the world. And so the amount of resources and the amount of opportunities that the site will have to grow and develop and evolve, I'm extremely excited about. And after a short break, I'm going to chat with Laura Cavanaugh from The Motley Fool about the plans for the future of the website, and I'm really excited to bring her on the show. But now a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by BlockFi. BlockFi is an all-in-one digital wealth management solution for cryptocurrency investors. At BlockFi, you can invest in cryptocurrency as a way to diversify your investments and earn more than you would at a bank. They offer a no-hidden-fee BlockFi interest account 
with an annual return of up to 8.6% APY. You're probably wondering how such a high return is possible. The way it works is simple. BlockFi makes its money by lending your crypto to institutional clients like banks and investment companies. Because they are lending your crypto at a high interest rate, they can then pass along that high interest rate to you. It currently works with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, or Stablecoin. They are committed to trust and transparency and have big name investors that include university endowments. As the industry leader in crypto investing, BlockFi is easy to use, has no minimums, and no lockup periods. If you're looking to buy crypto or earn a high rate of interest on your crypto, you should definitely check them out. For a limited time, you can earn a bonus of $25 in crypto when you open a new account. Just go to BlockFi.com slash grant to get started. Again, that's B-L-O-C-K-F-I dot com slash grant to get a $25 crypto bonus. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm really excited now to chat with Laura from The Motley Fool, who leads the distribution and acquisitions team. And I've been working very closely uh, with her over now many, many months uh, to transition Millennial Money over to The Motley Fool. And I just can't be more excited to join The Motley Fool family and partner up with you guys to grow the website. And there's so many exciting things to come with Millennial Money. And that's what I'm most excited about. This isn't just a sell your website and then let it ride off into the sunset. We have really big plans uh, for Millennial Money and partnering up with The Motley Fool gives us access to so many more resources and team members. And you know, the thing that I love most about The Motley Fool is just the alignment of our mission And then more importantly, the team, you guys are just incredible people, you know, in this day and age to to find truly high integrity, honest, open people who share your mission is quite rare. So I I couldn't be more excited. Thank you so much for having me, Grant. I am also so excited for Millennial Money to be joining the Motley Fool family. Like you were saying, our brands couldn't be more aligned and it's going to be amazing to grow this audience together. So for those who are or maybe aren't familiar with The Motley Fool, tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So The Motley Fool was started over 27 years ago by two brothers, Tom and David Gardner. Um, They founded the company for a similar reason to Millennial Money, which is ultimately to help people reach their financial goals. And this is still the number one driving force for our organization today. We are very much guided by our purpose, which is to make the world smarter, happier, and richer. We've been most successful in doing this so far by helping people to implement a smart, long-term investing strategy through our stock advice services and through tons of free content on fool.com. But we recognize that we have a lot of work to do to truly live our purpose. So millennial money joining the Motley Fool family is a great step in the right direction of living our dream to help a broad audience reach a diverse set of financial goals, whether you're just getting started, maybe setting up a budget for the first time or trying to get out of debt or you're well on your way to financial independence. We want to help you get there with advice that you can truly trust. Over time, whenever I feel like I've talked about stocks or investing in stocks, the Motley Fool has always come up. And I have to say, it's always in a positive light. And you have some extremely passionate fans out there. I mean, we're talking like, I talk to some people and they're like, yeah, you know, I've been, you know, a subscriber to The Motley Fool for like 15 years. And, you know, it's grown my net worth considerably. And I mean, you got some really big, big believers out there, which was, was really cool to see not only the legitimacy, but, you know, how much wealth that you've helped to create, you know, through your products and through your advice. And, you know, that's one of those things, my audience looking at the Motley Fool, I remember the first time that I saw it was like about picking stocks and buying stocks. And, you know, I write a lot about index fund investing, even though I do have individual stock holdings, but the Motley Fool philosophy is based around holding investments for a long period of time, three to five, even more years. So this isn't about, you know, getting rich quick or buying in and out of the market or day trading. This is about investing in valuable companies that 
are valuable businesses that will grow over time. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the Motley Fool investing philosophy a bit? Sure, that's exactly right. I mean, the long-term thinking is really a foundational principle of our investing philosophy. And just when you think long-term, you're able to react kind of with indifference when market volatility hits. And some of the most successful investors have the ability to remain calm and level-headed when everyone else around them is freaking out and there's all sorts of messages in the media. But if we're able to tune out that noise, this mindset really makes the difference between investors who you know, consistently outperform the market and grow their net worth versus those who maybe just get lucky for a short period of time. Yeah, and I think that's important because you know, there's certainly listeners and uh, financial freedom readers who, you know, if, if they're reading financial freedom, they're probably likely very interested in investing, but everyone has a different interest. Some people want to dig into every individual stock. Some people just want to put it in an index fund and forget it. But I think it's really important, even if you just want to invest in index funds, for you to understand the, un the companies that are, are within them and how uh, value gets created within a business and how that value transfers over to its share price. I know we've entered into kind of a wild era where you know PE ratios have gotten completely nuts and the idea of value creation is, is kind of wonky and wacky. So one of the things I'm most excited about is our plans for 2021. I, I have a team of about seven people on Millennial Money and now joining the Motley Fool family. You have way more resources and much bigger team and a global presence. And that's one of the things that excited me most, just about all the cool stuff that we can. And now we're starting to plan together. So I know we're planning out some products and a number of things that you know millennial money and financial freedom fans will be super excited about. Are you excited about that too? I'm so excited. I mean, like I said before, millennial money's mission to make financial freedom accessible to all could not be more aligned with the Motley Fool and our goals. I mean, throughout this process, our team has been blown away by everything that you, Grant, and your team have built at Millennial Money. I mean, we're so impressed by just the immense reach and audience growth since it started, but how you've maintained a laser focus on the mission to this day. So we're just really excited to build on top of the amazing foundation that is Millennial Money, you know, bring more resources to amplify what you're already doing and find some amazing solutions that we can offer the audience that helps them to reach their financial goals. Can't wait to get started. This is truly the opportunity that I was seeking to take the website to the next level and start competing with the biggest personal finance websites in the world and share this mission of financial freedom for everyone, truly to everyone, and make it as accessible as possible. So Laura, I'm so excited to work with you. I know we're just getting started and I'm sure the audience will hear more from you and, and the Motley Fool team in the future and can't wait till we can hang out together in person. But until then, we've got a lot of work to do and thanks for coming on the show. Full on. <laughs>